Hi, my name is Carl Conrad. I started Australian Immigration Law Services now 23 years ago. It's been quite a journey the first 12 months of our YouTube channel with just over 14,000 subscribers and three quarters of a million viewers. We have over 100 videos now, and yes, I look pretty daggy in the start, but I think over the year we have improved. On behalf of all the team that makes these videos happen, we would like to thank our viewers for their support, and in particular, all of our subscribers for their vote of confidence in what we produce. We make these videos to share our knowledge and to empower you to make the right choices for your future in Australia. Right, let's get on with it. We have received many comments to make videos about actual skill assessment processes, so here is the first. A company called Vetuses is responsible for the highest number of occupations on the general skilled migration list, so they are the best place to start. Most skilled visas, which are visas that are based upon your occupation, require you to get a skill assessment. If required, the skill assessment is a critical document and you will not get your visa without it. Some visas for which it is mandatory include the 189 visa, State 190 visa, Regional 491 visa, and the 485 Graduate Workstream visa. It can also be required for employer sponsored visas. A skill assessment is an evaluation of your ability to perform in your nominated occupation at the required skill level. To learn all about who needs a skill assessment and how to get it, watch our video linked in the description below. Skill assessments for different occupations are performed by different relevant assessing authorities. The assessing authority called VDSS covers a very large number of occupations. Examples of occupations it does skill assessments for include marketing specialists, customer service managers, human resource advisors, financial investment managers, ICT sales representatives, school principals, music professionals, ambulance officers, massage therapists, environmental scientists, zookeepers, tennis coaches, chefs, construction project managers, electricians and farmers. This long list of examples is only a small percentage of the occupations VDSS covers, and I hope these examples give you an idea of the variety of occupations that they cover. <laughs> VDSS has two pathways under which you can apply. General occupations fall under pathway 1, and trade occupations fall under pathway 2. If you're not sure if your occupation is in the general or trade occupation, use this tool on the VDSS website. In this example, a web designer is a general occupation. And in this example, a hairdresser is a trade occupation. In this video, we'll be covering pathway one. If you're interested in us doing a video on pathway two, let us know in the comments. If your nominated occupation is a general occupation, you fall under pathway 1. General occupations have to have an education qualification as well as work experience that is highly relevant to the nominated occupation. When it comes to work experience, all general occupations must have at least one year of post-qualification employment at the appropriate skill level and that employment was undertaken in the last five years before you apply and the work experience was at least 20 hours per week. Work can only count if the work experience is paid. The appropriate skill level for the occupation will be outlined in the federal government's ANSCO website. However, be warned, VDSS themselves have developed their own information sheets for many occupations and added more requirements than you will find in ANSCO. Remember, if you have stopped working, the clock is counting down and you must apply within those five years, otherwise it's too late. Further requirements for your VDSS skill assessment will depend upon your occupation. General occupations are divided into six groups, being A, B, C, D, E, and F. We won't go through all the requirements of each group as that will be guaranteed to put you to sleep. You can find a link to that document which outlines them all in the description below. For now, let's just take a look at Group C as an example. In Group C, qualifications assessed at least AQF diploma level with a highly relevant field of study and at least one year of highly relevant employment, or qualifications assessed at least AQF diploma level with an additional qualification 
at least a QF certificate for in a highly relevant field of study and at least one year of highly relevant employment, or qualifications assessed at least a QF diploma level without a highly relevant field of study and at least two years of highly relevant employment. Let's have a look at a popular occupation for Australia, cafe and restaurant manager, which is in Group C. Since it is in this group, if you have a diploma of automotive engineering, which of course has nothing to do with managing a cafe, you can still meet the requirement if you have two years of experience as a cafe and restaurant manager. However, you will notice that an information sheet is there for VDSS as well. Make sure you read these. This sheet has lots of useful information and one clause is particularly important. In order to be considered as a cafe or restaurant manager, the position must be responsible for every aspect of the cafe and restaurant's performance, including the management of all employees and the occupational development, oversight of establishment of operations, management of sales and profit targets, and participation in business planning. Many people have come to me having failed in their assessments for this occupation because they did not pay attention to this information sheet, with their reference letters not reflecting this level of responsibility. Once you get it wrong, it's hard to go back and fix. These information sheets are crucial and I can't stress this enough. If there is no information sheet for your occupation, then you can rely on the ANSCO descriptors for your occupation. I made a short video about the claiming points for work experience and the same principle applies here for the skill assessment applications. VDSS will call your employer and nearly always will call you and ask you questions about your duties. So be prepared. <laughs> Each VDSS skill assessment is valid for three years from the date of the issue of the assessment outcome letter. You may renew your skill assessment result before it expires. We mentioned in a previous video that you must have a valid skill assessment when you receive your invitation from the Immigration Department to apply for your visa. Otherwise, the invitation is wasted. It is critical to make sure your assessment has not expired. Some applicants may gain work experience after the skill assessment is done. It is not necessary to get a new work experience assessed as long as the work experience meets the skilled employment requirement. You can still claim it on your expression of interest. <laughs> a full skill assessment currently costs at $1,020 and is stated to take around 8 to 10 weeks to process. If you opt for priority processing, however, the turnaround time is significantly shorter and you'll need to wait about 10 business days. You'll need to pay, however, an additional $660 on top of your skill assessment fee for this speedy turnaround. The good thing about VDSS is that you do not need to provide any proof of English ability and without a skill assessment, there's not much point in attaining other documents for your visa, such as an English test, which is also costly. I talked about this in my step-by-step -step guide in applying for the 189 visa. If you want to watch that video, the link is in the description below. If you're not sure about the requirements after your occupation or want to clarify your employment as being highly relevant to the field or not, we offer Zoom, Skype and telephone consultations. To find out more at our website, australiavisa.com is the place to visit. Join us on Facebook to get all our updates and don't forget to subscribe to get our videos weekly. As always, take care out there and I will see you next time. So bye for now.